Hey there, happy Friday. Welcome to My Green Pets. I'm William Green. This is my cool tent. Currently it's sitting right at about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. That's about as warm as it gets. And then it drops down to about 60 at night. And you can see right here that Zygopetalum maculatum is really gearing up to bloom. These spikes have been so interesting to watch. They kind of whip around and around and curl and bend left and bend right, but it looks like as they finally get ready to bloom, they have straightened out perfectly. And I'm really excited to see these. I know what the flowers look like and I know what they smell like, but I've never had one bloom for me. So that's gonna be great. took some photos of this and showed it to you last week, my uh, Nepenthes Raja by Edward Ziana, toothy little monster here, and uh, got another picture opening back here on this Bongso hybrid, and I'm just trying to figure out what about these Nepenthes, what's not, what's not, what they're not loving, and, and what can I do about it, little discolored patches on leaves and stuff make me make me want to experiment and try to figure out what's what's not a hundred percent for them but uh, this Brassia Edvalu division has got two new growths pushing and I'm gonna need to pot this thing up it's kind of climbing out of its little pot and I'm just really impressed with how many roots these Brassias make so I want to show you my new uh, light in the warm tent. Let's go over there and and check out that situation. So here it is. This big panel is the SF2000 from Spider Farmer. It joins the other two panels that I had in here and it has effectively doubled the light all over the tent. I am really, really happy. Um, just to do some comparisons. So last week I showed you that the light right at the top of this Catlia triony was about 150 and now two seventy five, two seventy. Over here in the corner this Catlia hardiana was struggling along with about 70 PPFD value of 70 and now 175 here. Um, my Catlia Dawiana here. 250 depending on where it's oriented. Closer to 200 maybe. But even back here in the corner, look how bright. That is fantastic. And in fact, check out my Catlia Labiata. In just two days, I believe that is sunburn. At first I thought not sunburn, but light burn. At first I was thinking, oh my gosh, it looks like some kind of fungal infection, but given the fact that I just put this light in, I think it's light. I think it's just got blasted with light. You can see that the leaves are pretty dark green, and that's always a sign that Catleys aren't getting enough light. They're supposed to be a little a light apple green, kind of like a Grammy, Granny Smith apple color. So this plant wasn't getting a lot and suddenly it's getting a lot and I think it could be a result of the light. Very, very likely in my opinion. So that's just incredible. The seedlings I remember were getting about 90 and now right under the light here, look at that. So this is going to change things in here for sure. It's already had the effect of drying it out much more quickly, dropping the humidity. And another effect that I'm actually very happy about is that it has raised the temperature in this tent by a good seven degrees Fahrenheit. It was cruising around 75 and now it's up to 82, 83. And that's actually more of an ideal range to be in the low 80s, especially during the daytime. At night it cools down to 65 Fahrenheit and that's fine. So I'm really happy about that and it's going to be interesting in the summertime when the air conditioning's on to see how that the heat from that light will kind of buffer the effects of the air conditioning because I was really not happy with how cool it got during the daytime in the summer. 
So that's super exciting. And one more reading over here. These plants over here, there was no light above them previously, and they were cruising at a lot, at about 50, a value of 50 PPFD. And now we are at way higher than that, 150. So I just couldn't be happier. I th am pretty sure that it's not too much light for these plants. They're going to have to become accustomed to it and there might be some coloration on the leaves change and that kind of stuff i don't think that it's it's um too much we'll see though we certainly will see but um yeah i'm just really excited about that let me show you a couple things so this uh phalaenopsis philippinensis i moved it over here and i was able to kind of tilt the pot up a little bit so water drips into it a little bit better when it gets watered this Vanda falcata is still working on its little spike, and it looks like it's going to have six flowers on it in November. Probably won't bloom till December. Oh no, definitely won't bloom till December. So that's really kind of like six months off from what it's supposed to do, but okay, whatever. And then this uh, Cygnoches bronze vixen over here working on its spike still. And then next to it, Cygnotus varsavicii, also with a spike pushing. And a little bump over here. I'm hoping we, we see that little bump push out. Man, I'm super excited about the seedlings getting a lot of light now. I really hope that, that they look a lot better. They will be moving, though. I did order a, t a um, specific, a six-shelf plant stand specifically for the seedlings. So they're all gonna get moved out of here. Right here we've got um, Cloessia Rebecca Northern Aurora. Finally has dropped all of its leaves. So now it really looks cool with no leaves, just spiky bulbs and then those beautiful flowers. Still got a few more coming on this. And then of course, Mikabi has dropped all of its buds, didn't have a single one bloom out, but there's still hope there's one spike back here. Maybe it'll try to bloom. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm not holding my breath on that one. Uh, Cloessia Rebecca Northern Grapefruit Pink covered in spikes and we should see lots and lots of beautiful and very nicely fragrant flowers on that popping open in the next month or so. I'm just looking at some of my cat leaves over here. It looks very dry. Very dry indeed. But I'm trying to err on the side of dryness with the cat leaves. This cat leaf tree unit I just showed you a minute ago. Two lovely buds popping up there and those are going to be great when they finally do bloom be beautiful and maybe we'll get blooms on these two new growths as well we'll have to see so yeah we've really ramped up the light in here and I'm hoping that I'm only going to see good things I was really shocked to see the dark marks on those leaves but um, not too surprised once I think about it the amount of light that increased and in, the plant was so adapted to lower light and suddenly it got slammed with high light, so it is what it is. I don't see any evidence of that in other plants yet, but um, I would say after a week or so, if I'm not seeing those effects on other plants, then I think that might be it. Maybe just that one plant was a little bit light sensitive, but I think that it's going to be good. Uh, I turned, I flipped this, I think I installed this uh, yesterday, yeah, I installed this yesterday, so and it's only been 24 hours, well, maybe about 30 hours at this point, so we need to give it a week before we can definitively say that everything is more or less adjusted to it. So that's all, just wanted to share that, super excited about that, and hopefully, I mean, I'm just thinking, my plants did really well with just those two lights, so by adding another light are they going to do even better we're going to see
but I've got to also maintain this. I've got to maintain this tent. Uh, I've got to maintain it watered. As someone mentioned in the comments last week that be pre be prepared to water more. Yeah, well, yep, I'm prepared. My water wand over here. Let me just show you real quick. This is not an official watering video, but just show you real quick how I do this. So I got my watering wand here, and uh, I'm not going to water the Callias right now, but usually I'll come in every day and I'll water these guys, the Bulbophyllums, Phalaenopsis, plants that like a lot of water, the paths. Just give them a good soaking, and then they're dry by the next day, or drier than I would like, so even the Cattleyas that are supposed to dry out completely between waterings um, in this new arrangement, that, that still might be two or three times a week. 80 degrees and warm dry air blowing through the room through the heating system could be enough. Alright, well thanks for stopping by. I hope you had a nice Thanksgiving if you celebrate and Enjoy your weekend. I'll see you next time right here on My Green Pets. I'm William Green. Bye.